Thank you for having me. My name is Yo Hei. I am, uh, my topic is about uh, building an analytics workflow using Apache Airflow. Original title is uh, Airflow and Spark, but I dropped the Spark and focus on uh, Airflow. So my name is Yo Hei, and uh, I'm a data engineer who works for a Japanese retail company. I originally worked in uh, global headquarters in Japan, but I uh, moved to a uh, Singapore office. We work with a global headquarters in Japan, uh, deliver, uh, build and deliver the data platform globally. And sometimes I contribute to the uh, Apache Airflow project. So um, have you, how many of you have ever been to Japan? Oh, many. And how many of you have ever been to Tokushima? Where I'm from? No, nobody, okay. <laughs> so so it, it's just an ice break. So Tokushima is located in the uh, middle of Japan. So uh, I think you know about Tokyo, and uh, Osaka, and Kyoto, and Kobe. Tokyo, uh, no, Kyoto and Osaka, Kobe is in the middle. The Tokushima is very close to Osaka. It's just uh, two hours from uh, Osaka by bus. So it's famous for uh, beautiful nature and uh, great uh, traditional dance. So if you already visit uh, Tokyo, a famous place like Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, you should uh, visit uh, Tokushima next time. So, but unfortunately, almost nobody speaks English at all. So you can enjoy the true trip abroad. <laughs> So uh, this uh, from uh, this time uh, from this uh, I want to uh, start uh, main part of the session. So expected audiences are uh, data engineers. Uh, how many of you are actually data engineers? Uh, or how many of you are backend engineers? Okay. So uh, so ex expected audiences are uh, data engineers who are uh, working on the building uh, data pipeline. Also, are looking for a better workflow solution. So, I want to provide uh, from my experience on uh, Airflow uh, about what is Airflow, how you can use Airflow, so how you can build an Airflow cluster. Therefore, a uh, new uh, Airflow users, I will provide recommendation. So, what is a data engineer? Data data pipeline. A data engineer is a special type of uh, backend engineer who is uh, mainly focused on the data pipeline building. A data pipeline is an automated process of uh, data from a various data source. Uh, make, uh, we make data available for data analytics. Uh, sometimes data source is uh, microservice or enterprise system, and sometimes uh, IoT devices. Then we collect the data to uh, object storage like S3, or sometimes it's uh, real-time data we use Kafka. Then sometimes we have to uh, transform the data so that we can easily analyze the data. So we use uh, Spark or Pitch Beam or sometimes uh, Kafka Stream or Stream Data Processing. Then we use uh, we often use a BigQuery for as uh, uh, analytic data warehouse or Apache Hive or HBase. Then, uh, depending on the uh, use case, data consumer, PI uh, tool user, so they want to uh, visualize uh, our data so that uh, they can uh, make the decision on the business. And sometimes we build a machine learning model, then deploy uh, our microservice so that uh, in our retail uh, use case, uh, we build a machine learning model to predict the uh, customer. Uh, uh, we build a recommendation engine on the microservice. Then we change the user interface uh, depending on the, your preferences. Then Airflow is mainly for a uh, batch process. So it's like file-based uh, processing. And they focus on the orchestration of the entire workflow. So this is an example of my uh, use case. Uh, uh, I'm working for a retail company. We ship a million some items every day from uh, factory to warehouse, from warehouse to stores. Then these uh, activities are based on the shipment order from the inventory management system. 
So we, in my companies, uh, to track the uh, those are uh, logistics oper logistics operations. We put a uh, chip called the RFID to every single uh, item price tag. Then when we ship or when we receive, we scan, automatically scan, then collect the data from the factory and the warehouse stored so that we can understand how much we ship, how much we receive in the warehouse as a factory or store. Then during the, those uh, logistic operation, uh, operations, we collect the uh, uh, shipment data or receiving data from factory or warehouse and stores. Then we uh, compare uh, with the exact expected uh, result and actual result. Sometimes uh, uh, some operation error or sometimes a system error, there is uh, uh, some difference between the expected value and our actual value. Then uh, we report to the regional logistics uh, operators so that they can uh, improve the uh, logistics operation. And sometimes if it is a system error, we fix the system. So we do something like this one. Uh, then, uh, so this is a batch-based system. So we uh, collect the data from a factory system, warehouse system, store inventory system. Uh, using the uh, airflow, they, we collect the data, a uh, file-based data to the S3. They we import to the uh, hive, and so we uh, aggregate data and make a report for our uh, regional logistics uh, operators. Then, so this is our requirement to choose the ATL workflow. So at that time, when we start uh, this project, we already built a, a data lake, this uh, object storage to uh, store uh, structured, uh, unstructured, any type of data. Then so we want to build a batch-based analytics uh, systems. The only requirement is, uh, one is workflow generation by code. So we are a uh, Python engineer, so uh, Python is the uh, best choice. So um, I will talk about uh, GUI-based workflow uh, later. So the um, second uh, requirement is open source. So I want to, uh, we want to dip, uh, avoid uh, vendor locking so that easily uh, we migrate to uh, system to system if we choose uh, another option. And also, third choice is scalable. So, because we are uh, operating the business globally, so uh, sometimes we have to uh, deal with uh, large data sets. So, uh, data processing and the workflow must be scalable. And so, this is uh, oh no. And third requirement are simple, easy, extensible. So, since we have to. Uh, So we have to support uh, many, uh, so, so this is very annoying. So we have to uh, support many uh, use cases, so uh, tool must be extensible. There also, this part is, uh, last part is quite the uh, important workflow visualization. So uh, we write a uh, workflow in Python but it's quite hard to understand what the workflow looks like. So I will show you some uh, demo, so you can understand what does it mean. So I want to visualize the workflow, so we can understand what is this uh, working. So um, this is uh, another workflow engine called uh, NiPy. Uh, we have uh, used uh, NiPy in uh, some part of uh, data lake. So this is quite uh, reasonable to use uh, this uh, GUI-based uh, workflow engine because uh, so no uh, without the coding any coding you can build a workflow but this is quite easy to start with a small workflow but it's quite hard to uh, maintain a uh, build a complex a large workflow so this is not uh, we found out uh, this is not good uh, option so. We decide uh, Airflow as the main workflow engine. So, and what is Airflow? So, 
So Airflow is originally open sourced by Airbnb and now Apache Cloud project. And cloud, uh, now uh, GCP, Google Cloud, uh, released and managed uh, Airflow cluster uh, called uh, Google uh, Cloud Composer. The characteristic uh, covers the same, uh, same thing we, uh, I uh, explained uh, before. It's a dynamic workflow generation by Python code. The easy extensible, so you can extend a uh, core library to fit in your use case. And it's quite scalable by using the distribu distributed message queue. Then you can run uh, many number of worker nodes, or you can uh, scale uh, your workflow. So I want to show some demo. So before showing the demo, I want to explain the example. This is uh, just an example. It doesn't mean anything. So let's say we have a database. This stores uh, some shipment order record. They, we want to uh, deliver to the regional warehouse system. We want to deliver some shipment order data to regional uh, warehouse management system. So we export data from database to uh, then export to the local S3 bucket, the copy to the regional uh, S3 bucket. So that's it, very quite simple. So I, I create a sample uh, GitHub repository here. So I prepared the Docker Compose file. So this runs the Postgres database and Airflow. So if you have uh, installed uh, Docker, you can run uh, this sample code. Then you run the Docker Compose app, then it's uh, running. Postgres database and Airflow is running. Then you access the dashboard. So uh, this is a list of uh, uh, job. For example, this is a job for uh, Singapore. So if, you, if I turn on the job, the job is automatically start learning. So let's check the, uh, this is a, a visualization of uh, my workflow. It's quite simple workflow, but sometimes it's, it's complicated or there is a branch or it's much more, a real workflow is much more complicated. Then you can check the, which task in the workflow is running, so you can check the log of the task. So it successfully export from a database and export to the local bucket. In the next task, it successfully copy from a local SD bucket to regional SD bucket. You can check the, the log like this. So first uh, execution, task execution, uh, DAG execution, and second one is successful. You can, you can also, uh, find some uh, variable here, then you inject some uh, environment dependent uh, uh, configuration. Also you can uh, define some uh, credential for uh, database or uh, AWS uh, services. So airflow is something like this. So the source code is uh, quite simple. Uh, main part of the uh, job is something this one there. So I want to run task one and task two. The task one is uh, export uh, data from uh, Postgres database to S3. I want to run this SQL. So uh, Airflow support a uh, template. So this variable and this variable is not uh, uh, it's not decided in the 
before the runtime. So this value is decided uh, at the runtime. So you can use a template like this one. S3 bucket and object key. Object key is parameterized. The second task is S3 copy from S3 to another S3. This is source object and destination object, a source bucket and test bucket. So uh, then define uh, job specific uh, configuration. So this means you have a single code base, single business logic, then generate a uh, Job, uh, then uh, inject the job uh, specific uh, configuration, then generate a uh, different uh, job, <coughs> like you see in the airflow dashboard. So powerful thing about airflow is uh, power, uh, airflow is Python uh, based uh, workflow too, so you can uh, write a single code base, then generate many tags. This is the main reason we choose uh, airflow. So uh, then I will uh, I show the uh, some sample code and I will explain the key concept in the airflow. Airflow job is called the DAG, is it, uh, which stands for a directed acyclic graph. So there is no loop in the job. You define the DAG, then specify the DAG name. Then you define the each task in the DAG, like possible using the operator. Operator is the abstraction of task. You define the abstraction of task, which is called uh, operator. It's kind of a uh, library. Then instantiate uh, each task using the operator. Then you define the uh, uh, sequence of the task, like uh, like this one. Also, template. Uh, you can use a template. So some uh, property in the DAG is no, it's not decided before execution. It, it is decided at runtime. So we template like uh, execution day. Sometimes we want to use execution day in uh, S3 object key or sometimes in uh, SQL query. So we use a template in such a such a use case. The operator, so operator, as I said, operator is the abstraction of a task. You you can uh, define the what value is templated. So you can define some uh, property. Then in the execute uh, method, you define the uh, business logic of the each operator. So that's a, a key concept of the airflow. So uh, from now, I want to explain how uh, you build the airflow cluster. In the uh, production, uh, airflow, uh, class, uh, airflow uh, server must be uh, high available because you uh, sometimes uh, you have to uh, continue the service uh, every day, 24 hours every day. So usually, we uh, build a uh, Airflow cluster, we build uh, some uh, master node. Uh, master node has a scheduler, job scheduler, also web server. And each worker node has an uh, executor, is a uh, thread to run uh, each job. But as a backend, uh, if you want to uh, uh, scale uh, Airflow, you uh, have to use an uh, executor called uh, Celery executor. Celery is a uh, name of a message distributed message queue. So we use a MySQL and Redis. Also, uh, we use a uh, uh, metadata database as a MySQL. MySQL. Then we uh, set up a load balancer for web server master node. So uh, we can uh, log into the web. Uh, Admin console from the from the load balancer. So it's something like this. So on the CI/CD pipelines. So once you build the airflow cluster, you have to deploy 
your source code every time you change your code base. Then in our case, we uh, use a GitHub repository. Then uh, basically we use Jenkins to upload source code to uh, Airflow uh, worker. Since uh, we uh, use uh, AWS SQS to uh, store the every uh, event on the GitHub repository, then uh, Jenkins server is pulling the SQS. Then uh, Jenkins, if Jenkins server find uh, some uh, events, Jenkins server uh, pull the, from the GitHub repository, then uh, upload to the source code. So we uh, build something like this one. Also monitoring, so uh, Airflow support uh, a webhook. Web uh, is a kind of feature you you can learn some uh, code when you when some events like uh, if a job fail, you are uh, your registered uh, web is executed. Then we basically use a Slack for monitoring, so we set up a uh, uh, cloud watch metrics monitoring on the AWS. Then if uh, we uh, can watch on some errors, uh, it notifies errors to uh, Slack channel. And we also use uh, Airflow webhook. If the job fails, uh, Airflow notify error to the... Okay, so you might say, uh, okay, understand, the Airflow is great too, but we do not want to manage the cluster. Uh, it's a uh, serverless error, so you don't want to manage uh, cluster because in our case, uh, in our case, we build a cluster for each project so that we can easily manage GitHub repository or deployment. So we basically we build a cluster for each project. Each cluster has at least minimum three nodes. So once we get um, a many project, we have to build a cluster for each project. Then we automate it. Uh, uh, cluster building using uh, Terraform or Ansible, but still uh, cluster management, uh, server management is sometimes painful because uh, sometimes the EC2 is suddenly, uh, not suddenly, but shut down some uh, EC2 instance because of the server issues. So it's server management is quite painful. Then uh, Google Cloud Platform uh, released a Cloud Composer uh, this is a pre managed uh, airflow cluster uh, provided by uh, Google. So it's uh, pre managed, so you don't have to. Uh, it's Google uh, Composer is uh, learning uh, some server instances, but we don't have to manage. Then using a Google Composer, you can focus on the business logic, then we don't have to manage the cluster itself. So um, using a Cloud Composer, you can create a cluster using a CLI like this one. G Cloud Composer environments create your cluster name. Location is like Asia, EU, US. There's some uh, other uh, arguments, like uh, some arguments include uh, instance type or disk size, privilege uh, network, or some Python version, uh, Airflow version, something like this one. Then you run this command, then in a half hour, your cluster is ready to use. The deploy so your source code to cluster. So you can run this command to uh, deploy your source code, like gcloud composer environment, then storage, dev import environment. Your cluster name location is like US, EU, Asia. So it's name space for your uh, dev source code. Then this command uh, will upload your source code to a uh, uh, cluster specified uh, GCS bucket, Google Cloud bucket. Then G, uh, Cloud Composer automatically deploy from uh, your source code from a GCS bucket to uh, com uh, Airflow cluster. So um, Cloud Composer is integrated with a uh, stack driver. So you can uh, 
monitored your car stat using the stat driver uh, matrix type. This uh, matrix is a CPU usage of a uh, composer, uh, memory CPU utilization. Some. So I want to show some uh, dem demo of the log composer. So this is a, a user interface of a, a cloud composer. So you can open the Airflow dashboard. It's same as the same user interface because it's uh, Airflow based. Same user interface on the user. So since it's uh, integrated with the stack driver, you can check the log from uh, Airflow cluster. So I like this one. The Airflow Composer is use uh, Kubernetes as a backend. So actually, Airflow Composer cluster is uh, Kubernetes cluster, like this one. So actually, backend is Kubernetes. So Kubernetes supports all healing as default. So if your node has some issues on the hardware issues and software issues, then your node is down. So your uh, composer cluster automatically fix your uh, cluster issues. So how many of you have ever used uh, Kubernetes before in production? Okay. So uh, we, uh, our chip is uh, using a Cloud Composer for a couple of months in production. Is, there is no issues, so I'm uh, um, satisfied so far. So, uh, so I, I said you don't uh, have to manage the cluster itself, but if you are engineer, uh, if you are infra engineer, you Sometimes you have to dis define, uh, design a VPC network or something like infra stuff. So you have, you should understand the Kubernetes. But if you uh, uh, very focus on the business logic or uh, uh, dark uh, like a data pipeline itself, uh, you don't have to care about the backend. But if you are infra engineer, you have to understand what the Kubernetes is and how Kubernetes is working. So that's end of uh, my presentation. Uh, in summary, so data engineers have to build a reliable, scalable data pipeline to accelerate uh, data analytics activities in your company. The Airflow tool is a great tool to uh, build an author and monitor uh, workflow. The, in the production, uh, Airflow cluster must be high uh, available. Right? And it requires uh, high availability. So it's, if you uh, build a airflow cluster in EC2 or in an on-premise server, it's really painful. You have to maintain and operate uh, your cluster every day. But if, using, if you use a Google Composer, this uh, service build your cluster using the Kubernetes engine. So basically, you can upload uh, cluster management, server management to uh, Kubernetes engine. So that's OK, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Onishi-san. So for this part of the talk, we will be open to Q&A. So do you have any questions about the topic? We can cater around two to three questions until 12 noon. So don't be shy. If you're shy, I can just go to your seat and then force you to ask your question. 
or I will ask a random volunteer to ask a question. Joe, does anyone have a question? Yes, hi, JP. Yes. So first, introduce yourself, where you're from, and then ask your question. I, I, I'm JP, uh, from IBM. So, well, the original uh, topic was about airflow sports, so I was wondering how you can work with airflow and sport. So how would you work with Spark in the context of the, of the airflow workflow? So your question is how to use a Spark from Airflow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or would, would it be like you're, you're just going to use uh, Spark in the operators or something like that? So uh, Airflow has an operator called a Spark operator. So you can learn the Spark job from the a Spark uh, Airflow job. So, so would it still use the Clusters already provisioned for Airflow? No, 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 no. Uh, Airflow, a cluster is only for Airflow, but okay. if you want to use Spark, you have to build your hardware for Spark. Ah, so it's a different, uh, different cluster. Different cluster, yeah. Ah, okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have other questions? 